C.J. Corky Publishing presents The Marshmallow Mystery by C.J. Corky. Grandfather, Grandfather, I'm here. Ever since Sage could remember, she and Jack, her teddy bear, went to Grandfather's house to pick the marshmallows that grew every night from a special bush in his backyard. The soft, squishy treats bloomed in pink, yellow, green, and sometimes just snowy white. This visit should have been just like all others, but this time, something was not right. No marshmallows. What happened? This has never happened before. Did someone take all of the marshmallows for themselves? Or are they hidden? Sage looked everywhere, around the fence, the red pump, the fire pit, and she even reached up on her tippy, tippy toes to see if they were up high on one of the branches that seemed to touch the sky. Realizing that they were nowhere to be found, Sage began to cry. Accidentally dropping Jack in the garden, she ran fast as she could to find Grandfather. Jack stood up and called to his garden friends. What happened here? Who, who took the marshmallows? Quinn the firefly said, Don't look at me. I was busy last night flying around with my friends. Jenna is always eating. Maybe Jenna ate all the marshmallows. Well, Jenna the ant replied, Well, don't look at me. It's true, I do like to eat, but I did not take those tasty marshmallows. Then Zaba the toad spoke up, Don't look at me. Flies are my treats, not marshmallows. The sun is really hot today. Maybe it dried up the marshmallows. Don't they bloom at night? Look in the window. Sage is so sad. We have to figure this mystery out, Jack said. Things are not always as they seem. First impressions may fool a few, but the wise look closer so it will come into view. Carl the Hummingbird chimed in, but no one understood what Carl meant. Jack and his friends gathered around even though they were confused about what to do. If the marshmallows bloomed at night, maybe they would discover who the thief is by keeping watch. So Jack went with Sage and left his garden friends on their own to try to figure it out. The next morning, Sage came out hoping to find the bush filled with marshmallows, but there were still none to be found. Again, she dropped Jack in the garden and ran to tell Grandfather. What happened? Jack yelled. You were all supposed to catch the thief. The marshmallows are gone again. Carl hummed mysteriously. Search carefully into the night, but tomorrow you will discover another sight. So what do we know so far, Jack said. Well, <laughs> I didn't eat them, said Jenna. I didn't eat them, said Quinn. And I didn't even think of eating them, said Zaba. And while each of the garden friends suspected one of the other, it was Jack who piped in. And Jack said, I don't know what happened, but we need to make a plan. We have to trust each other and figure out how to work together. Carl agreed. A message was left for you to take. Don't overlook the garden gate. Jack thought about what Carl said. Things aren't always what they seem. Hmm. Discovering another site, a message, and, and something about a garden gate. Hmm. Well, the animals put their heads together to think. This time, Jack would stay in the garden to help them stay awake. We need to figure this out together, he said. The garden friends are different in so many ways. Size, color, shape, and even wisdom. Each had strengths, but not the same. So how could they work together? What can they do? Well, Jack decided he needed to help them recognize their unique abilities their superpowers. And Jack said, what do you think you can do to solve the mystery? Quinn said, I can light up the garden so we can see. I can do this. Jenna joined in and said, I am strong. I can carry water to the dirt. I can do this. And Zaba said, I can make myself bigger to scare off the culprit. I can do this. 
and I will stay with you because we are all in this together. We can do this, answered Jack. Well, the sun went down and they waited. The night was long and strange noises came from everywhere. Suddenly, a sniffing sound, a rustle around the fence, then the bench, the red pump, the fire pit, and finally, the marshmallow bush. Squish! The dirt from Jenna's water had turned into mud. Zaba made himself so big, he looked like a monster in the shadow of the moon. And suddenly, Quinn lighted the garden, and the culprit was caught. They did it! In the morning, when Sage arrived, she was surprised to see a puppy sitting next to the marshmallow bush and excitedly called Grandfather. Grandfather wisely said that the puppy was lost no more. Let's call him S'more, said Grandfather. And S'more, the puppy, joined the family forever. Jack and his garden friends saved the day. Bringing out the best in each other is what we do, said Carl. We are garden friends, and now the dog is one too. But Grandfather knew that the entire time. The End So the Marshmallow Mystery is coming soon to Amazon and to our website. Look for it starting July 2nd. Dear Beta readers, just a note to thank you for your pre-read of the Marshmallow Mystery. Your participation made our day. Your suggestions mean the world to us, so let, let us know what your thoughts, recommendations, and suggestions are. Just email them back. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Love, hugs, and blessings. CJ Corky. Thank you.